So, I am mostly in Scotland today. That right there is the most northerly point in Scotland. And no, it is not John O'Groats. So, think in the comments, where is the most northerly point in Scotland? The land in the distance, I think, is the Orkney Isles. Not entirely sure, but on a map it looks like that. This morning, we are in probably the one of the prettiest fields I've ever seen in my life. Uh, that's George Williamson, a better man. Well, where do you find the time? If you're putting 3,000 hours in the tractor? I don't know. Yeah, you make time for anything when you've got to leave, just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just See that? out in the boat, away fishing. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen very often. That only happened once last summer, which is disgraceful, you know. That that's, must happen more this summer, but now we're halfway through summer and the boat has never been in the water again. Yes. But uh, we will do more of that. you got to make hay with the sunshine. Well, that's it. That's what we do, aye. Yeah, that's what we do. I think in the foreseeable future, if farms will get bigger specialist units, hopefully keeping cows, because we need cows in case it's a, it's a cattle country, like, you know, it's no arable place. There's a bit arable, but we need cows and sheep in case So I think it'll be bigger units. There'll, be a, there'll still always be a few smaller family farms. I think that's the way it'll go. At the moment, it looks like they have to be big. They have to get across to them. Well, what is the average size of a, a farm at the minute in terms of head number, number of head of cattle? Well, we've got a few big units, but like this is a very typical family farm we're on here just now. We probably, and I don't know the exact number, but probably maybe 70 cubes, 60 or 70 cubes. Yes. And a, a few sheep here. It's not, not big and cheap, but a few sheep. Is that typical? Oh, that camera fell off. I was just watching. Where is it? Just got the camera head on my pick up. I just seen it rattling off. I did one through that bit. I just caught her here, I think. You should be there. If you didn't go further. It's alive. That's some better man voice. So we came up here today to see not today, come up here this week. To see the county of Caithness. Uh, we're basically in two of the major cities that are up here called Wick and Thurso. Thurso's where we've been sort of based. Uh, we've met three signage teams so far. Uh, Wes Greenland, William Ronson, and Derek Ogan is brother Evan. That's been the three, today's number four. So, if you've ever heard of a thing called the NC500, this is on the route to the NC500. So basically you swing up from Inverness, up the East Coast, and then you go down the West Coast. Can be a bit of sea fog, but we've been blessed with uh, glorious weather. Right now, it is the thick of first cut. Well, they're, they're sort of two thirds of the way through first cut. The pollen is fierce. Uh, my assistant, Connor, down there, has been absolutely dying. I have been absolutely dying. Uh, plenty of pollen on the go. Uh, it's the 16th of July right now. And <laughs> there's hay down there, there's silage in this field. Everywhere there's just grass going down. Um, landscape wise, lots and lots of nice stone walls. Uh, probably the most interesting feature that I've seen here is this type of fencing. So you'll see two stone slabs stacked together. Sometimes they make fences with like a full row of that right down the field and the two strand of barbed wire at the top. I have never seen this fencing before. Oh, the flagstone with the, with the barbed wire. You've never seen that before? Nowhere else. Right, right. Not that I, I could be wrong, but I've never noticed it before. Ah, you'd say, yeah, it's it's very popular in Keith as a flagstone. A bit of quarries and that, yeah, it's... How, uh, did, they, how did they make the thin slice? I mean, is that sod or is it just... I don't know how they, how, how they made them like that, you know, but you can see they're, they're, they do lean, you know, they're... You know, the, and the cattle are bad for breaking them, you know oh, what I mean? Right. They get their head in about them and they just break them right at the bottom, you know? And, yes. and then all of a sudden, you know, a young calf or something, he's through it, you know? Are they good with sheep, are they? Ah, uh, the sheep are the same, they're, they're, they're through it, they're away, like, you know, they're flattened. I feel they shouldn't be, you know? So you wouldn't recommend it then? No, no, I'm, I'm more a Rylock man, you know, Rylock face. Make more like a prison, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you need to when you work with sheep, and I'll tell you, they can, they can get through anything. 
Uh, what else can I tell you about up here? Seen some nice cat. William Ronaldson was our first stop there on the edge of Wick. They run a Crone 580. It's uh, a really sweet looking Valtteri. A uh, really sweet looking Valtteri. She's only weeks old, not maybe a couple, two months old, not sure how old, but she's not old. Uh, running on the, the Butterfly Moors. Mowing in a Valtteri T254, just got a few weeks ago. So everything's kind of new to me in here. <laughs> <laughs> our Valtteri dealers are also our Chrome dealer and their fan dealer. So you can kind of see that we're getting a good service because we've got chrome mowers front and back and chrome forager. Well, what do you think of the chrome? Aye, yeah, good. What was she before? What, what, what did she replace? Oh, she replaced the John Deere 748. Must be a big step up from the 7480. Eh, power wise, mm, no, she'd only be about 20, 30 horsepower more than a, than a 7480, but it's uh, performance wise, it's a long way better, you know. The, the, the thing that's probably different about here to contractors on the rest of England, Ireland, the farmers haul a lot of their own grass. So the contractors typically will haul two trailers with them wherever they're going, drop the two trailers and the two farmers will pull the two trailers. So typically you send your harvester, your buck rake and your two trailers of your own and then your two spares for your farmer to pull. Do you love watching agri content? Well head on over to farmflakes.tv or download our app and you will fill your boots on all the agri content you could possibly ever want. Head on over and take your three day free trial today. Most of the Scottish guys I've videoed in the past use tractors on the pit. A lot of them use tractors on the pit. All three of these guys run shovels, um, all JCB shovels. How long you had the 435? Second season with 435. Ran a 416 before that. But a <laughs> mate of mine in Orkney uh, came on. He's running two forage wagons and was breaking front linkages quite a thing. And I said, you need to buy a shovel, boy. So. Uh, he came on then thinking he maybe could buy my one. Or I sort of said, well, I could sell you my one. Ours was a really tidy 416, came for LJ Neil, I don't know if you know all Neil. Yeah, yeah. Came for Ollie, two year old, 2000 hours. We ran it for seven or eight, nine years probably. And we bought a second hand 435 from Andy Miller in Wales. Down in the Wales and bought one of the very last pre ad blue ones. Yes. Just to try and keep away from some of this electronics. The electronics are fine when it's going, but when they're not, they're no great. Well, this is your first shovel you have had then? Or is... Yeah, she's yeah. first in now. We got her in... We got her in 2017. Got her. Did you just try anything else, or did you demo anything else? We had a demo of... Uh, oh, one identical thing last. Um, in a 2016 it was. So... No, we... We had it got a shot with them, we just really liked it, and we just... Yes. We didn't really price much else. That time. Well, are you JCB fanboys like, or would you just be open to something else if it was good? Or I, okay, I would, I would try anything really if it to see. But it's so far, it's been really good. You know, it's it's got what two thousand old doors in it now, and yes. touch wood. I shouldn't say this, but we've had no no bother with it. You know. Uh -huh. um, I see your better man has stopped. Maybe it changes the plastic. So, <laughs> just heard the big sneeze there at him. <laughs> Hay fever is an, un an unpleasant thing, a very, very, very unpleasant thing. What we do is not ideal either. <laughs> the we're out, it's grand to say that I'm behind an air conditioned cab, it's not a problem. But we get the extremities of it here and what we do. You don't have a baller of hay fever, do you? I usually do, to be fair. Um, I try and keep on top of it, like. But yeah. Especially when you're out working with stuff like this. Aye. Then you're in a nice aircon car, but you don't really feel it as much. Yeah. Oh, last year was last year was bad enough. 
I was driving the baler and you would go and do the net change and you'd just yeah. get it all gathered on the top. Oh. We were out with a boy there two weeks ago and he's like a, a square baler but it bails hell into it. And I don't know what he done, but he blocked like he blocked her solid. Alright. And he had to lift sort of the front covers that just sits up above the drill bar. Uh -huh. And I was standing in the middle of it and hoping grass out of there and come out and I'd a rash the whole way up that All arm. Right. A rash the whole way up that arm, the rash the whole way down my chest and all. Oh bad way. Disaster. I really, really enjoy this view. I have to say, yeah, it's it's gorgeous. I think they can have catchy years up here too. I've I've seen photographs they showed me. Um, I think a wet year's a wet year. But this last three, four seasons have not been too bad. I think their bad, last bad one was 2019. Uh, a lot of crop up here. Apparently the uh, the livestock numbers have been dropping. A lot of beef and sheep. So there's one dairy left in the area. I think the biggest driver in that is the lack of places to process it. And I think Inverness, I'll have to hold Inverness now if, if, if they're in that dairy game. Fine looking rig, you like a bacon bars on the top here. I can't make up my mind, I think bacon bars on the top are a wee bit marmite. You either like them or you don't. But I sit somewhere in the middle, some tr trump factors I think sit them. But not every tractor. Depends on the bacon bar as well. The Dutch like that I think too. Right, I should really assist my cameraman a little bit, so I'm going to get on the drone here and uh, do my thing with the drone. So we're planning to set sail south uh, after this and we're going to do a revisit uh, on the way home tomorrow with Mark Hunter. Uh, you might remember him from 2017. The little thumbnail has probably got the most views on our YouTube videos. This is a little teaser for his episode where there's an absolute mountain of round bales. Um, I guess it's just that he's grabbing that amount of round bales. So he's still at the round bales. Uh, I'm curious to hear if he still enjoys handling that many round bales in a year. Um, I suspect a lot of contractors who've gone down that road, not contractors, farmers who've gone down that road of independence with the round baler. Um, I would have thought a fair percentage of them lived to kind of not regret it, but sort of go, oh, mm, not sure about these bales. That's going to be my question is like, He's still loving the bales, Mark. Uh, he's changed his tractor, he's changed his baler, he's bought himself a new Caltech. So, um, looking forward to the revisit there. You boys get that a gold mine or what? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Just working hard. That new grain you bought, you yeah. just struck a lucky. Oh, there's a, <laughs> there's a quarry in the middle of it. We start selling stone. I wish you last four years. A lot can change in four years. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm only starting. You know, Actually, yeah, you have to invest or you'll go backwards. Like. You know, in the time you were here, you know, the, the new Holland and the McHale Baylor and all, you know, it's not as if it was brand new then either. Yeah. You know, we'd had it a good few years and it was... I say, do not miss the new Holland anyway. <laughs> Where did you go? Somewhere in Balamina, as much as I know. Because I got a phone call from a boy asking me what I thought of her. Yes. I just had to pretend like she was a good tractor. <laughs> it had been in the of break shortly. Oh, sh Probably. Right. Wanna be out of here by two o'clock ish. It's about nine o'clock right now. Um, we've been to Lidl and we've had our pan of chocolates. That's what we've been my weapon of choice for breakfast on tour. It would be a fan of Tesco's for my sandwiches and stuff like that. Tesco's what? chicken and bacon and Caesar wraps. That's the one. Right, I don't have much food left here, better get your Just in time for my cameraman to get out and chat to my better man. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna perk up and tell me better man gets bailing again. 